Hi, I'm Pat Gunn, and this is my weekly uh, blog. So, um, over the last week, I finished reading up the um, the Watch series from a, a set of Russian authors. I think I've, I've talked about this a little bit before. There was uh, there were two movies uh, in Russian and five books, which were translated into English. Which uh, I just finished up with the fifth one. It was uh, Really pretty, uh, pretty good urban fantasy. Um, there's something, uh, I guess, interesting about that genre, taking a lot of old style uh, fantasy type stuff and mixing in some noir elements, putting it in a city, may maybe makes it a little bit more accessible to modern uh, viewers. Uh, but I guess one of the interesting things about this series, and I've been just trying to figure out like, when it comes to stories, what what uh, is there apart from a plot that makes a story interesting, and, and apart from characters? And a lot of it is chewing over interesting ideas. And I'm not sure if the if the authors of the Watch series, if they, um, if their if their rules for their world were really determined from the beginning or not. But. Um, there was a lot of chewing of, uh, over it as, as characters tried to figure out, like, how the world works, how they fit into it. Uh, I mean, like, how the particular part of the world relating to their abilities uh, fits into it. Uh, uh, and, and how these things fit together. I, I just, it was interesting seeing, I guess one of the, the biggest problems I see with a lot of fantasy is that people know everything. They know the rules to the world. There's no confusion about it. Everyone just knows knows everything that there is to know. That's kind of frustrating. It's boring. It's not much like the actual world that we live in, where we're still figuring out. And, and part of the part of the biggest adventure of being human over, like, the, uh, the many thousands of years that we've been civilized is that we've slowly been figuring out how the world works, how we work, how our brains work. We're confused. We disagree. We have different perspectives. Uh, it's the conflicts between those perspectives that it, it gives it adds some interesting spice and a lot of our fantasy world uh, <clears throat> a lot of our fantasy worlds they take place in worlds that are completely understood because I think what it is is that the author in order to really make that world they need to understand what they're doing more or less and because they're not confused about their world they don't remember that that people in, in reality are confused about the world that we live in. So they they lose sight of the essentiality of that confusion. And they also have generally have the similar fault of having things having, of giving things names that everybody agrees on, giving things uh, worlds of, of, of words that everybody agrees on. And again, as an author, they, they need to do this for themselves, but they might forget that their characters probably shouldn't uh, agree with whatever perspective they choose. And so it, it's holding on to that complexity and uncertainty that's in reality that often makes a work of fiction interesting. <clears throat> so the Watch series was just pretty good for, uh, for that. Um, I have been working my way through Final Fantasy VI for uh, Android, which is basically it's a re-release of, I think, the Game Boy with some enhancements, the Game Boy version of that remake. And it's just a lot of fun. It's I'm getting very, very near the end of that. Um, but there's something nice about playing an old, uh, old game that has a lot of nostalgia value for you. And... Final Fantasy VI was just one of those games that was absolutely fantastic when it came out uh, way back when. <coughs> and, uh, and yeah, replaying it with a little bit of added content, it's, it's just a joy. Um, I do have all the other Final Fantasy games. I'm probably going to give up on four, though, because they, uh, Square Enix, they kind of botched the interface. But maybe the other ones are decent. Oh, yeah, one... I've been playing one, but it's just, it's too much like the original. I don't think they added any content at all. And I made my way to the Temple of Fiends in that. It's just like, 
yeah, it's a lot of effort. I don't really know if it's worth worth going through any further at that point, but it was fun. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I guess that leaves two, three, and five after I finish up with six. But I, I don't play, I don't game that much. So it, it'll probably be like many months, uh, if like one like that wants to say hi. It'll probably be many months before I get done with uh, get done with that. Um, so over the last week, uh, I set up interviews with two companies for next week that I'm uh, one of them I'm really excited about. The other one I'm uh, at least hopeful about. Uh, would be nice to have money coming in again. Um, would be nice to have uh, insurance and all that other stuff that isn't coming out of pocket. And all that. So I'm hoping that uh, I definitely lean very strongly towards one of the two companies, but you never really know with interviews. Uh, so I guess I'll find out soon, uh, hopefully, how things are going to go. And hopefully I'll be employed again soon. <clears throat> uh, last Monday, I woke up with, uh, or I went to bed with a migraine uh, a little bit after midnight and then woke up in the morning with with the migraine. It faded a little bit by late uh, late afternoon and in the evening I went to a slide slam at the American Museum of Natural History, which was a lot of fun. Um, it was a, uh, I'm, put, I'm not sure why, but my cat here seems, uh, Beeflo really seems to want to be uh, on the keyboard for the Linux laptop. But, but the slide slam, uh, I don't feeling I've described this before. Well, in any case, yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just describe it really briefly. Then I might have talked about it on on a post on Google Plus, but um, it was held in one of the auditoriums, absolutely packed. Uh, they had two artists who came on to talk about how much the museum meant to meant to them uh, over the development of their careers, and they showed some art that had been inspired by some of the dioramas in uh, in the museum and the. Uh, library director Tom Bayon, uh, he he talked about the original pieces. They talked about their about the works that the original pieces inspired, and um, yeah, it was just really cool. Plus, we got some slides. Uh, yeah, they they handed out slides, uh, some some slides to everybody who showed up, which was neat. Uh, you can hold them up to the light and see them. I I don't actually have a slide projector, but they are kind of neat swag. Um, uh, beef that don't. Uh, on Tuesday, I hung out with a friend from out of town, uh, and uh, in the evening, I tried to go to the American Museum of Natural History's. Uh, oh no! Don't do that. <sighs> yeah, that cat has a thing for rubber bands, and she just spotted some of them that I've been meaning to put around a power brick over here. That's been kind of. Uh, not holding together super well. So my rubber band, uh, the problem is that it's uh, currently, the laptop is plugged into it, so I haven't integrated them. It, it's basically waiting until the next time I shut down my Linux box. Uh, oh yeah, so I thought that I was going to an event at AMNH called Celestial Fireworks, but it turns out that apparently I forgot to buy tickets. So I showed up I uh, went to the will call desk, and uh, they didn't find any tickets for me, uh, which was a bit of a bummer, but <clears throat> things happen. Um, <clears throat> on the 1st of May, uh, that's uh, International Labor Day, uh, I wrote a post that I, I, I every year I, I try and uh, remind people about how important the labor movement is and was in the United States. Uh, sometimes I talk about how Unions, while they're imperfect, were better off with them than without them. Sometimes I just talk about some of the advances that the labor uh, movement did that we might not realize have benefited a lot of people today. But uh, yeah, so Thursday was Labor Day. Um, had a first phone conversation with, uh, with uh, one of the companies that I'm talking to next week. And then I had dinner with another friend from Pittsburgh, uh, who, uh, well, I mean, it's somewhere between friend and acquaintance. That's, uh, but 
uh, someone I, I met after I'd already moved out of Pittsburgh uh, during a uh, visit back, and he happened to be in town for uh, for work. And uh, and so we went to Williamsburg to a really great uh, uh, pizza place called Fornino's that uh, that has like European style gourmet pizza, really good stuff. And I, I really haven't spent a lot of time in Williamsburg since I left the last job. Um, and so it was a little bit weird to be back in that neighborhood, but it wasn't too bad. Um, didn't bump into any former coworkers. Uh, on Friday, I, uh, spent most of the day hanging out with someone. And then afterwards I went to a talk at, uh, Genspace which is the, uh, the biohacking collective that I, I've probably talked about before um, in downtown Brooklyn, where they were talking about neuroscience and how, uh, trying to popularize it to kids, which is pretty cool. Uh, the, the, the guy had, uh, who was presenting had a rather, uh, he had a, a demo. Uh, I mean, he talked a lot about the really basics, uh, basic neuroscience things, and I didn't really learn anything at all. From the presentation itself, I mean, I've done neuropsych research, I'm published, yada yada, but um, it's rather it was neat to see how he made the topic accessible to people, and uh, he had like some uh, cockroaches that he had people wire electrodes into that they could control, um, stuff like that. It, it was it was neat. It was well done, and it's always neat to be at Gen Space. I'm actually going there later today to uh, to help um, to help with some of their projects. Um, on Saturday, I went to a Kickstarter party, which um, which is uh, a Kickstarter. It's located in Greenpoint, which is a little bit north of Williamsburg. If you don't know New York really well, so you have you have uh, Manhattan which is this island that's kind of the heart of New York, third most populated borough of the five boroughs. But um, you have Manhattan, and underneath it, and stretching off until, uh, yeah, underneath Manhattan, it's kind of shaped like, like the moon. The bottom half of Manhattan, it's at the bottom of the moon, and then it kind of, uh, so you have Manhattan. I'm actually not sure how the directions on this are going to work out, um, given... Uh, mirroring and all that stuff. But, uh, it's this way, I think. So this is Manhattan. Uh, Brooklyn is kind of like this. And then you have Queens, which which then folds all the way back around the other way. And uh, so I live in the southern bits of, of Brooklyn, more or less directly south of Manhattan. Well, not quite directly, a little bit east, but it's, it's more south than it is east. Uh, Williamsburg is like due east of Manhattan. And just a little bit north of Williamsburg is, uh, is Greenpoint. And Greenpoint is like the northernmost bit of, uh, of Brooklyn. Since beyond that, you're, you're talking uh, where Queens and Manhattan are right next to each other instead of Brooklyn and Manhattan. Um, I don't remember why I was talking about that. Oh, yeah. Um, so, Kickstarter is in Greenpoint, and they held a block party with, where they invited a, a number of people who, uh, who I think reside in New York and who have neat inventions and uh, gizmos, foods, stuff that they, uh, that they funded through Kickstarter that they want to show off. And so they just had a, a line of, uh, of stalls for people showing off their inventions and stuff. And they had some food, and they were offering tours of the Kickstarter offices. I didn't actually uh, do one of those. I was thinking about it, but I, uh, I didn't really feel like being inside. Um, so I went there, and I saw a lot of their inventions and, and goodies, and it was fun. Um, didn't stay for too long. It, it was basically like, a little bit less than, or it was a short block, uh, and I saw all the stalls and then I left. But it was it was neat. And since I was in the area, I went a little bit north up into uh, southern Queens, or well, 
the southern bit of Western Queens and uh, and went to Gantry uh, Plaza uh, Park, which is one of the better places in New York City to just lie back, uh, uh, lie back and relax. Um, they have wooden benches that are like almost, but not completely flat. And they're perfect for taking naps on and you have a fantastic view of Manhattan. Um, lots of uh, people playing sports around and uh, uh, I don't know, kids chasing each other on bikes and community gardens and stuff. It's just, it's, it's a really, it's a little bit yuppie. It's probably really boring at night, but it's, it's a fun place to be during the day. So I went up there, hung out for a little while, uh, came partly back, had Indian food, came the rest of the way back. Yeah, it was a, a really nice day. Yesterday was just super pleasant, and the weather just has been fantastic recently. Um, haven't really done a lot today yet. But, uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, I'm going back to Gen Space to help out with some projects. Um, and I just want to uh, ho hopefully have a good next two days while I figure out what my employment stuff is going to look like in the near future. Um, Media-wise, <clears throat> it's a little bit weird. I, I've been uh, watching, I've been rewatching some uh, some of the really good old episodes of Deep Space Nine. Um, again, I mean, I'm I'm really really a fan of that series. I think it's the best Star Trek and probably the best science fiction uh, in recent memory, at, at least on, on screen media. And um, yeah, I've been watching, yeah, just, just a few of my favorite episodes. Um, but I've also been watching a little bit of the My Little Pony stuff on, uh, on Netflix and it's surprisingly good. It reminds me a little bit of the Powerpuff Girls. Um, it's a little bit saccharine, but it's self-aware in its saccharine, uh, saccharinity, saccharineity, saccharinity. It knows that it's saccharine, and it tries not to go too far. It recognizes that like excessively bouncy or enthusiastic people are sometimes kind of irritating. Um, but what makes it interesting is it makes me realize how bitter uh, and grumpy I am a lot of the time. And I, I know that there are some characters in there where they, they develop their personality in a certain direction and it's just portrayed as pos uh, positive. And I don't really agree that it's, it's positive. I think that the main character, she's kind of bookish, uh, easily gets grumped out by people who are socially aggressive, she's kind of introverted. But I'm getting the feeling that she becomes more extroverted over the course of the series, and that's a little bit weird for me. I don't really see that changing. Maybe sometimes it does. But um, I think I almost would, would prefer the main character before her character development than after it. Um, and that's, again, cleaning uh, something from one of my cats. And that's, uh, that's a weird thing to see in a series. Like It's almost like watching somebody apologize for something where you don't approve of their apology, and, and you do approve of, of what they originally did. So you just kind of cringe. It's like, that's not really a, a good direction. But on the other hand, it's, I'm, I've only watched a few episodes so far, so maybe I'm, I'm guessing about which direction the, uh, the series would go. But... Um, yeah, it's entertaining to watch sometimes. Um, I don't think, I'm not much of a TV watcher to begin with, so I'm probably not going to get through it uh, very quickly at all. Um, but it's it's good to see series, I mean, what makes it interesting, it the character development is so good, and they have really pretty good voices too. Um, the stories tend to be super, super simple. And they're all kind of uh, uh, Aesop's, um, how we should interact with each other, how we should manage our lives, yada, yada. All, all pretty responsible, generally, if a little bit um, grossy eyed um, But just the character development and stuff is, is so, or, or not character, I mean, the characterization and the voices are, are so good. It, it makes it pretty compelling. 
Um, but yeah, it does make me realize how how bitter I've become with many areas of life, and that I've detected in myself some of my occasional irritation with the sh uh, with the show comes from uh, idealism that I turned away from a long time ago as being impractical, uh, or or trying to be idealistic to a certain degree, it just will open you up to a world of pain. So having something so openly declare that this type of idealism is positive, <clears throat> that level of idealism is positive, it reopens old wounds. And, uh, and also just the whole thing with the introvert becoming an extrovert because you're in a good environment. I don't think that's the way things work. Of course, I don't really know. I, I feel that I'm introverted. And I'm definitely often bitter and grumpy and uh, not the rosiest of, of, of people. But I have my doubts as to whether being put in a, in a really completely healthy social circle and having all the other things that I'd like to have, whether it would make me more, more extroverted. Pro it probably would make me happier, but I, I don't think it would change the introversion. And, um, but... But I can definitely feel the show is kind of pushing on some areas, saying some things are possible and great and wonderful and let's celebrate it, that are essentially closed doors for me, or at least doors that I've closed for now for me. And just reality doesn't seem to be that great. It doesn't seem to work that way. And it's kind of, yeah, it's... It's weird seeing the show and realize and, and feeling this happening and realizing that's what's probably going on inside my head and that's why I get a little bit grumpy at some parts of the show. And it's not the only show that does this. There are some other shows I've seen, but this is really kind of full on super, super saccharine stories at times. And uh, so it, it, it makes a rather pronounced effect. And like I'm, I'm definitely not used to the idea of like friends being particularly loyal. I don't tend to trust things that tend to start to feel that way. I'm not used to seeing the inner lives of people that don't have a certain amount of paranoia or or self self dislike or any of these other things that I often have to deal with. And so it's it's weird, but. But then again, I guess we never really know what the people around us are, are going through in society unless, I mean, even if we talk to them, they, they might not tell us, but normally these are topics that where you'd have to know someone really well to know, uh, for them to be comfortable talking about it. And so I have no, none of, I, I have no idea how much my inner life is like that of other people. I suspect not a lot of people do know that. And so we're all these islands of meaning with a few little bridges, very topic-specific bridges between us. And we just have to deal with not having a lot of immersion into other people's, uh, the meaning that they put into lives, uh, into their lives. And so in some sense, we're all going it alone. Or at least that's, that's the way I usually feel. But, um, but yeah, the, the show, it, it does weird things with that. Um, I'm trying to remember if I've seen any other uh, any other films recent uh, recently, mostly on on Netflix. Occasionally, if I'm not quite tired enough to fall asleep, but but feeling too tired to actually get up and do any work or more serious reading. Um, the next issue of uh, of the Middle East Journal arrived uh, recently, and I stuck it in my computer bag. I'm looking forward to reading it. I'm going to need to renew my subscription to that soon. Um, but yeah, the academic journals, they're and and semi-academic journals, they're they're pretty good ways to follow current event uh, current events. And now that I'm kind of on uh, on the ebb when it comes to gaming. And generally, I can't do a lot of work on the teaching stuff when I'm on the road. Uh, I keep a lot of the stuff on, on one of my laptops rather than on my server. Uh, 
for on the web. Although I'm trying to change that. I, I'm, I stuck some stuff in Git, set up a remote repository uh, on my uh, server. And, and I should be able to work a little bit more easily on class stuff um, while, I'm, uh, while I'm not at home. But, but yeah, just a lot of the time I, I just get tired in the evenings and I kind of want to want to veg out, but I'm not quite ready to go to sleep yet. Although I probably should just more often just go to sleep at that point. It, it's not really a not readiness to go to sleep. It's just this feeling that I don't want the current stream of consciousness to end just yet. And, and every time I wake up, it does, it, it's like a new stream of, of me. And uh, it just, it, sometimes it's a little bit existentially weird to go to sleep. Um, like, are, are we really the same person in the morning? Well, I mean, I guess there's a certain amount of continuity. And maybe there isn't even a strong continuity, uh, continuity moment to moment when we're awake. But the delusion is, is hard to escape, or what I presume is a delusion. Um, yeah. And I guess I, I really, I, I should get back into sketching probably soon. And, and knitting, of course. I really need to get better at that. Um, I think with the sketching, though, it's just hard to... I often am, am more inclined to do that when I'm outside my apartment. My, my apartments, it's a lot less this way than it used to be, but there's still the tendency to, whenever I'm here, to wind down and to not get a lot done. Just because uh, it's, I'm more accustomed to thinking of it as a as a place where I ease myself into sleep, or where I am recovering from not feeling well, rather than a place where uh, where I get stuff done. And I, I think I mean sometimes I thought that it would be nice to live someplace where I could have multiple separate structures and just have a little bit of space between them outside. And like instead of having one one house, I would have a small number of huts, and they would be devoted to a purpose. And and the psychological distance between them would come from the physical distance, and it would be easier to think, okay, I'm in the huts where I do my artsy things, and uh, and there would be less of a temptation to like just uh, head over to the bed and relax for a little bit, and maybe fall asleep. If I were in a separate structure, <clears throat> I mean, separate rooms would help as as well. I haven't had separate rooms for a while. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I guess that just comes from having left a left a place where there's a lot of a space that people have to work with. But I mean, we we all I think benefit from these tricks, these mental separations. Uh, that help us devote certain areas and certain times of day to a purpose. And for me, I think having <clears throat> having uh, separate structures would probably help a lot. It might get kind of weird in the winter uh, when it gets too cold. But if the distance weren't great between them, it, it would be fine, I think. I mean, I, I sometimes, I, I've spent a lot of time over the years, just trying to figure out if I really could uh, imagine living as I wanted, uh, having whatever types of structure I wanted to live in, uh, what would it look like? And I mean, one of the more the more common ideas, uh, or more, one of the more compelling ideas that I've had, would be to have a converted um, <clears throat> a converted. Uh, 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 one of the uh, darn it, what's the word for it? Um, having a converted uh, one of those telescopes that's raised in the middle of the room. Uh, I mean, like greatly raised, like one uh, one story isn't the right word for indoor. One floor. <clears throat> so, like, you would have a big domey room and a telescope. In, in a on a raised plat uh, raised platform on on the middle of it that's like one floor above and you'd have like circular staircases going up 
along the outside of the circular bit that the telescope is on. Now, if you were to remove that telescope and leave the rest of it there, I think that would be a really neat foundation for, uh, for a home. And I've often had dreams of, uh, of having a home uh, that was uh, built off of, uh, built on one of these converted, um, like, t telescope, uh, observ <clears throat> observatory. Yeah, I think that's probably the, the right word. Um, but yeah, having a home that would be built off of one of these, that would be pretty cool. I've often dreamed about it. Uh, I definitely would, would like that, or at least I think I would. But but I have played with other ideas, like these, this the set of just single rooms that uh, that share or that are in close proximity to each other, that I would walk between for uh, for housing. That that would be pretty neat. Um, th those are probably the two most common designs. I, I wonder, do do people in general dream about about homes, like designing homes, designing? And I've also been thinking a little bit about like designing clothing and stuff that would indicate one's status in society, how one wants to be seen, uh, stuff like that. And just all these dreams about the way things could be. I I guess they're the, they are among the things that send me off on flights of fancy. But anyhow, I think that's. Uh, I don't think I have a lot else to talk about. Um, I am beginning to unplug my live journal stuff. I, I used to use live journals uh, some years back, uh, primarily back when I lived in Pittsburgh. And uh, it never was the primary uh, place for my blog, but it was a place that I, because I wrote my blog software, I set it up to mirror every post or almost every post to live journal. And I'm, at this point, I haven't blogged a lot recently, and I definitely, I haven't interacted with people on LiveJournal much, so I'm starting to, to unplug that, uh, that tie for my blog, and to, to begin to chop down on that, uh, on that presence that I used to maintain there. Part of it is my discomfort with, like, how Russia is, has been behaving recently, and LiveJournal got bought by a Russian company not so long ago, or I mean, maybe a few years ago. Um, part of it is just the, the people that I knew in Pittsburgh, or at least the ones that I met through Carnegie Mellon, I no longer really have much in the way of ties with them. And that, that's for a lot of reasons. But, I mean, regardless, it, it's, it's a fact. And so if I'm not really reading them anymore, and I'm not posting their... Uh, and, and I'm not cross-posting there very often anyhow. There doesn't seem to be much of a point in, in still being uh, theoretically present there. So I, I, I need to go back, find all the content that I used to read on LiveJournal through their syndication uh, reader, and figure out a new, re new way to read that stuff, and then just continue to shut down that account. I'll probably, I mean, it'll still remain open. I probably won't delete all of the old posts. Uh, even though they're mostly just mirrors of stuff on my proper blog. But I think it makes sense to at least stop having it look like I'm active there. Yep, so not, not a lot else uh, going on. Um, I Every time I do these, only a few minutes after I tell it to stop recording, I think of an, another few things that I probably should have talked about. But, as usual, none of it's come to mind. I haven't yet gotten in the habit of making notes for things that I'd, I'd like to talk about on, uh, on these. So, that's all.